Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Fusion for 60. Uh, let's see how much I can fail on a pattern. Uh, start off, this is not a beginner's tutorial, if you're a beginner in Fusion, follow some beginner tutorials to start off, because I will not explain exactly every step on how to push buttons and move things around, you need to know that. This is just uh, showing a workflow, some of you will most probably complain I'm working too fast, but that's totally deliberative for me, I like to work fast. And that's how we get things done. This is like if you have a face, like the one I marked here. And when you, you want to play some type of pattern, it could be circular cutouts, hexagon cutouts in a nice stacked manner. And this hex pattern, or should we say equilateral triangle pattern, you can see the triangle down here and triangle right here, is a nice fast way to put a pattern on something. And in the design intent, of course, I said, I do not know the dimension of his face, as I don't care about the dimensions. I'm just going to work through, put the pattern, make it reasonably be centered on the face, and then most probably 3D print it. Uh, let's start a new design. We need a, I'm not going to create any components or save anything. I'm just going to start by creating some type of a body that we can play around with. Two, three, four. We have. A rectangle, we're going to extrude it 5 millimeters or whatever dimension you want. So we're going to open up our browser and hide the sketch. Now we have a body. We have a face here we can play around with. We're going to create a sketch on the face. P for project, project in the face. Hide the body, select all the lines. Uh, you can see the blue profile. I'm going to get rid of that. So I select all of them and turn it into construction geometry. And we don't have this flashing profile. We create a polygon. Somewhere here, we're gonna dimension. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna constrain the first. I want this side to be parallel to the side or vertical, whatever your name you want to call it. D for dimension. This here, this is the first one I'm gonna name. I'm mostly naming it to avoid problems with making the pattern too narrow so they get overlapping. I'm gonna show you how I do that. Hex uh, width, let's do that 15. We are going to dimension this from the side here, 13, something like that. This is my starting dimension. This will most probably be changed so that I can center the pattern. I don't care about centering for right now. Simply going to do this. And we're going to do some lines we need to create the collateral triangle. We could use a polygon, but I'm simply going to draw a triangle. Select all the lines and make them equal. So that's my equilateral triangle. Uh, I will now dimension the triangle. It's not really needed. The only thing I need is this angle here. So I can move over this hex cut out up down in this angle here. But for my sanity and for naming the dimension, because I will use the same dimension over and over. If I use the same dimension over and over, it should be a name parameter. It makes it much easier to not need to type in the same number over and over again. Dimension this year. I'm going to base it on the hex width uh, and then, oh, I have caps lock on, that's nice. Uh, I'm going to plus uh, hex width is the same. The width of a hexagon placing the next hexagon to the side is the same as the center to center dimension with no now material in between. So we're going to do a two mm. Now we do three, this is a quite big part. So three millimeters like that. So that is going to be 18. Do you remember to name it? No, I need to name this, of course. Pattern. Uh, width. So this is now named pattern width and this is hex width because we're going to use this pattern width over and over again within our pattern. Going to finish sketch. I think I got everything here. I got the pen, uh, sorry, hexagon and I got the triangle. That should be everything. Extrude this little profile. Turn on our body. Minus 10. That's totally through the body. You can do that, of course, to do whatever version you want to do. Uh, let's see, that's that. S rectangular pattern. We're going to do a rectangular pattern of feature. This extrude feature. Uh, direction is going to be, we can use a sketch line like that. Check that you're using spacing. And here we're going to do our pattern width like that. So that's using our earlier dimension. And we're simply going to add until we fill. And okay, if I do that much, I'm going to overshoot. So I'm going to move it down one. I make sure the compute option is optimized. That means it's only patterning your faces. And this is a constant thickness body. So that works nicely and is the fastest one. Hit OK. 
And as we can notice now, uh, this is not very nicely centered. So we're going to inspect. Let's do this. This is 12.5. So the question is how now, how much do I need to move this uh, hexagon to the right? This is 12.5. That is 5.5. .5. And 12.5 minus 5.5, that should be 7. So we're going to close the measure, go back to our sketch and go this direction. So I don't want to change that number. I'm going to do minus oops, 7. That's, that's for full. So dividing it by 2. Sorry. Oh, not minus. I need to add. Wrong direction. I need to move it to the right. So I'm going to do plus like that. Finish sketch and have a look. Let's inspect once again. Sorry if I'm confusing you. 9 millimeters here. And... Ah, we do the inspect and nine here. So now we have centered it in this direction. That's nice. Other way now, I want to create this pattern. So I'm doing a rectangular pattern, rectangular pattern of features. Yes, these two features. What is the direction? The well, direction is uh, upwards. Let's do some axis here. We can do that edge. Uh, spacing. What's the spacing? The spacing is the same as earlier pattern. But if you remember the math for uh, equilateral triangle, the height of a triangle, and that's what we use, if you can see the equilateral triangle, the height of the equilateral triangle is the side multiplied by square root of 3 divided by 2. But in this case, we need a uh, double the height because this is the height to the next line and that's uh, shifted slightly over. So simply multiply this pattern by a square root of 3. Oh, sorry, uh, I need to turn off caps lock because Fusion uh, wants square root to be small letters. Uh, like that. We're going to move up, 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 up. And that overshoots, so I don't like that. So I'm going to stop there. going to do OK. Wait for Fusion. Same thing here. I'm going to inspect. Let's lose this corner and here. 25.3. And down here we are 4.3, 25. That's 21 millimeters in difference. So let's edit our sketch. And now it's this dimension here. So I'm going to do plus, and we calculated 21 divided by 2. Let's finish and see. Yeah, we got a reason we can do inspect once more. I don't care about the small numbers here. What are we? 14.77. And down here we are 14.83. So yeah, that's good enough for me. So we are done like this row. Now we're going to do the rows in between. So first of all, we need to move this cut up, up to here. Yes, rectangular pattern once again. And of course, feature is our first extrude here. This one here. Direction is going to be this here. You can see the arrow is pointing downwards, so that already gives me notation that is minus pattern width. And I only need two of those. So I need these two only pattern. I don't need to pattern up here once more. Optimize, yes, thank you. S, rectangular pattern. Rectangular pattern of what? These, this earlier rectangular pattern. You see it lights up the faces. The direction is going to be vertical or horizontal. Uh, pattern width. You can see I'm reusing the same dimension over and over again. That's why I use a parameter, so I don't need to remember number. Hit OK. S rectangular pattern. Features the two last rectangular patterns. Uh, this direction here. And of course, again, the pattern width multiply by the square root of 3. And we simply add up until we have filled up the pattern. Hit OK. Here I draw a sketch. And that's how you can create a simple pattern like this. You can do more features, but like, like you want a simple square, let's call it hexagon pattern like this. This is a simple workflow. You get it reasonably be centered in the part you want and you can go on doing other things without the need to like, oh, I need to measure the exact distance and then do all the calculations. You can use Fusion to help you put the pattern reasonably centered and make something like this. And then just throw it on your 3D printer and see what pops out. With that said, take care, see you around and goodbye.